Live! Hi guys, how's everybody doing? I am, um, it's been a while since I did a live. I did some lives for, uh, for Q and Lou last weekend, but I haven't done anything other than that in, in weeks or months. Um, I shouldn't say that long. I did something for, um, last month, but I guess that's about it. It's been a while. So, I am hungry. Kids have just gone to bed. Um, I've got this prime grade, um, New York strip right here. And it's frozen. It is. It's a. I, I thought it just a little bit. Just on the outside, just so that the rub would stick. And I did it with a little salt and pepper. And I, I hit it with a little caribou um, for my boy, um, my boy Kurt. So a little beef, beef, um, beef big and bold caribou. Not a ton. It's you know, it's it's a prime grade steak. It doesn't need a whole lot. So um, I just, I just basically. Um, uh, enhance the flavor a little bit there, just just to uh, add just a little bit to it. And then over here, we're going to be cooking on my American Muscle Grill. And yes, I'm going to throw that frozen steak right on my American Muscle Grill. I don't know some of you are going, oh my god, don't put it on the gas grill. Well, the gas is really just to ignite the charcoal. And I'm, I'm trying for the first time ever B&B charcoal. Um, I think the first person that told me about this was Big Mo Quezon, Big Mo. Um, thanks. This this is oak charcoal. It smells great. And I'm going to show you something really cool here. Look at this chunk of charcoal that came out of that bag. There's my fist. And it's my fist is, is half the size or a third of the size of that, that, that chunk of charcoal. It's the biggest chunk of charcoal I've ever seen in my life. So that is from the B&B charcoal. I also have some post oak, which I haven't played with. Had a little more time, I would have played with it. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna I'm gonna show you this. So we got a nice little bed of coals going in here that I lit with the with the gas. The gas on this AMG American Muscle Monster Awesome Grill. Um, the gas is just really to ignite. You can use it as a gas grill, but most of the time I use it just to light the charcoal, or in this case the lump charcoal. So I'm gonna set that down. And uh, I'm gonna let that let that kind of go for a little bit and get that those grill grates good and hot. And then Oh, set that, that lid down on that American Muscle bad boy. This thing is uh, designed after a 69 Shelby Cobra GT. Um, so that's why you got the styling there. And it's got this, this cool, I can turn off my lights here. And then of course the top button is for the headlights that are inside. So, oh hey Irene, how are you? So, I picked up, I got a good deal on some, some um, prime grade steaks uh, a couple weeks ago and had them. Um, I vac sealed them, and so we are going to cook this steak frozen. That's right. You heard that right. I'm, the steak is still, still frozen. It's a little bit thawed on the outside, just to get the uh, to get the rub to stick. I use a little caribou right here, and I'll let those grill grates in that grill get hot, and then we're going to um, basically just get some grill marks on the outside, and it's going to do some amazing things to this to the steak. Um, and I, I know people think you don't know, cook a, a freight steak frozen. It's amazing. It, it actually just it just thaws it out just right. Um, why frozen? Because it takes saves me the time from thawing it out. Um, I am a father of four children. My oldest is nine. My youngest is one. Okay, I don't have a lot of free times. I have a day job. I have two companies to run, two small companies, and so I don't get a lot of time. This is why it's what nine o'clock right now, and I'm just now cooking my dinner. So. Um, I just want to show you, it, I, I now cook frozen steaks more than I cook um, thawed steaks because that's my lifestyle. That's what I, that's the lifestyle that I live. I, I don't have the time necessarily to thaw them out. And literally tonight, we were rushing off to two different soccer practice, soccer practice and a soccer game. And, you know, I didn't want to have a hot dog at the concession stand. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go home and cook myself a damn steak. And who can blame me, right? So, so we're going to go ahead and um, we're going to cook the steak up on that American Muscle Grill. You're going to be uh, along for the ride. I'm even going to slice this thing here right in front of you, um, and we're going to um, we're going to enjoy it. In, in, in the meantime, we're also going to, you know, you guys want to ask some questions. Um, we want to talk. Uh, maybe have a cold beverage. Mm. Uh, I'm all seasonal, man. This is a Lining Kugel Oktoberfest. Um, I like the pumpkins and the Oktoberfests and all that. Yeah, I'm the guy. Um, I'm the guy, the reason why it's everything pumpkin this time of year, because I love all that crap. Um, and if you guys are wondering why it looks like I'm inside, um, my deck is covered. So let's go over here, and I'll show you 
show you what, what what's over there. So, see, that's that's my deck. That and there's a there's 17 feet of it is covered. Um, right here, obviously, it's not. And there's an, an upper level. This this level here, and then we've got. So, that's what we're doing. We're try, we're cooking this over B and B charcoal. Um, I just um, heard about it last weekend at. Well, I'd heard about it. Um, like I said, at Mo Case, I was raving about it at the Royal, and I actually met the rep um, uh, Joey Machado at. Um, at um, Q and Alu last weekend. So, uh, yes, when you I like this statement. When you need steak, you need a steak, and I do need a steak. So we're gonna go ahead and take this bad boy. And we're gonna put it right over that charcoal. And now this is where it's gonna get kind of boring because you're gonna have to look at me because we in order for this to really work well. Um, I need to close the lid. So, the reason why what we're doing now is we're searing and at the same time we're thawing because it's a frozen steak. Um, I know it's nuts. Um, if you go to my website, grillandfools.com, and just search on the word frozen, um, I did this um, a while ago when, when, actually, it was when Instagram only did 15 second videos. That's the longest you can make a video. And so I did it in increments of 15 seconds so I could put it on Instagram. So the, the, the post on the website, grillandfools.com, um, is, it's got it there, but it's, it's a bunch of little 15 second videos showing the whole process start to finish. Someone asked how far the coals were from the meat, maybe two inches, three inches. Um, there's this little, each, it's got these trays along the bottom of it. Um, and you can fill it with, with this American Muscle Grill. I can fill it with um, um, charcoal. Um, let's see here, charcoal. I can do this. Is post oak? These are actually so, almost solid logs. Like it's that's that's a foot long piece of log. I can use that. I can use chunks of, of hardwood. I can use a combination of both. Um, it takes charcoal or hardwood to become then to get raging hot in about five minutes for a solid log. It takes about ten minutes. Um, but we uh, it literally turns any any fuel source. Um, they used to advertise that they did pellets, but the pellets burn up too fast. You know. So, um, you know, we do it, it, it hardwood, um, um, I do lump, I've even done briquettes in it, um, I don't like to because it leaves a, just a boatload of ash, when I use lump, I have so little ash, it means less cleaning. Um, so, for those of you who just joined, let me sum up. Alright, so, tonight, soccer games, I have four kids, so we were doing soccer till... Um, so just about an hour ago, and then we we're switching cable providers, so we were binge watching shows that we recorded, and I had anything to din for dinner, so I'm grilling a frozen steak. That's right, that sucker. I thought it out just a little bit, just to get some moisture on the outside, so that the, the rub would stick. Um, I went with a um, just a caribou, uh, big and bold. Um, something I didn't do a lot of, just kind of a dusting on it, because I just want to accentuate the flavors. I don't need to mask anything because this is a prime grade steak because daddy got a deal a couple weeks ago and they got um got flash frozen in my uh in my fridge my wife vac sealed them oh god love her she's good with that with that unit and vac sealed them i'm like you know what i'm having a steak tonight i don't i don't care that it's nine o'clock i'm starting i'm real frozen and it's gonna be amazing so let's open this bad boy up let's turn it back around and check out my american muscle grill um and yes, it does look like it's a gas grill, and it can be gas grill, but I use the gas mainly as igniter for this charcoal. Ooh, we're, we're dripping, the fat is dripping, and we got a little bit of a fire. Ooh, we got a couple good grill marks there. Uh, you're not going to get the best grill marks with a frozen steak because if it's not frozen perfectly flat, and this one had a little bit of a bow to it, just a tiny bit, it won't, it will not, um, it will not uh, 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 lay flat because it's frozen. It's not gonna, so you're not going to get that. So we're going to close that back up again. Um, um, sh 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 guys from Brazil saying hello. Um, I'm going to go through some of these questions here. Um, so it won't hurt to thaw it under hot water uh, for five minutes. Well, I'm not thawing under hot water. I might thaw it under, under um, cold water. Well, it, takes, it takes a good hour. Um, but seriously, try it frozen. It, 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 but, okay, so here's, here's a trip with the frozen. Um, if it's too thick, like, like I did this once and it was really, really thick and it didn't, it didn't go very well. It's got to be kind of in that inch, inch and a quarter range, inch and a half is kind of pushing it. But if you go to two inches, um, 
you could you could still do it. It's just a little hard. You gotta you gotta get your grill marks on the outside and then throw it off to the side and let it bake for a little longer. Um, but it's just it doesn't it, it's not as, as clean and as pretty. Like I say, we're not gonna get the greatest of grill marks here. So um, let's see. So we're gonna have to just go with um, what it is because like I said that, that that put in the freezer you know thawed and it just moves a little bit like that because it's sitting on something that's not level. And then now you got a concave and it's frozen solid. So it's you're not gonna get that without you know. So it's okay though. Um, so you know, where's the hair go? Well, I I, sh I shaved my hair off um, about about eight years ago to raise money for kids fighting cancer. It's a it's an organization called Saint Baldrick's. I raised about three thousand dollars, shaved my dome, um, never been back. I I don't think I've ever grown the hair back. I love it. Um, I don't have to worry about um, it raining or my hair looking great or whatever. I just, I just get up, you know, take a shower and I save a lot of money in shampoo because it's use a bar of soap everywhere, you know? So yeah, that's why I shaved the head. Um, you know, I, I shaved for a good cause. Um, and the, the little girl that I actually raised the money for is, is no longer with us. And, um, that breaks my heart. I actually wore a, a bracelet for her for, for years. Um, because you know, she was a great little kid and, and it breaks my heart that she's no longer with us. But, um, you know, to the army, and I don't want to go into it any more than that. But um, she had her, her, I'm sorry, to her brigade, um, and I was a member of her brigade. All right, so you've got some questions on how much the grill is. Um, I normally don't talk pricing um, on this, but you guys want to know, and I'm going to let you know here. We're going to turn this around and look at the steak real quick. Um, see how we're looking on the other side. Um, oh, we'll see, we got some. It's uneven grill marks. This is not quite. Throw it out. So we're gonna go back there and flip it over and see if we can get some of the grill marks. So this grill, um, the head unit here, which is above this drawer, and this drawer has has three big component, uh, big containers in there, allows me to store um, fuel. So I got I got some fuel in here um, and a light for my deck. That um, that below there, the cart's about two thousand dollars. The the top part here. Is about five grand, fifty five hundred, and then the side cart is another two grand. So it's almost ten grand. So it's not a cheap grill. Um, the thing is, though, it is built um, beyond anything I can ever. I mean, it's it, the steel is so thick and so high quality and so well made. Um, they source the, chi the, the, the the steel from China, but it comes in sheets, and they the craftsmen in the United States build it from the ground up. It is tr a truly a work of art. It's something that uh, my kids. Um, I, I keep saying that, that my kids will be a fighting me for, are fighting over it after I'm gone. And I'm like, no, they're not. I'm getting buried in it, all right? I'm going to go with this thing, man. They're just going to just curl me up, you know, rigor mortis and all, chainsaw, whatever. And they're just going to bury me in this bad boy because uh, that's how I want to go, man. I want to go out. I want to be where I, you know, what I love doing. So um, maybe they can have the cart. I don't know. They <laughs> could buy their own head unit. But that's how I plan on going out. So we're going to sum up one more time. I have a frozen steak on that grill, like that, that steak. Well, it was frozen. It's still probably halfway frozen. Um, it's a prime grade New York strip. Um, salt and pepper, a little bit of caribou, big and bold, um, beef rub, just a, just, just a dusting of it. Don't wanna, I don't wanna mask the flavor of the steak. I just kinda wanna accentuate it. And that's the way to go right there. So, um, Good guy, by the way. Carrot Hall is a good. He's a friend of mine. I love the guy. So, um, so then I got it on my AMG. I'm trying out. I'm trying out my new charcoal here. I've never used this stuff before. This is a B and B charcoal. Um, I didn't know it was available in, in, in where I'm at in, in St. Louis. Um, I heard raise about some of the guys on the you know the big cooks and the barbecue tour. Um, and then I found out it was at Academy Sports here in St. Louis. So. Um, then I went over and said, let's talk to the guy there at q and last year. So, um, so somebody asked me, how do I regulate the temp on this? Well, the, the temp I'm going for here is hot. So, um, that's, that's what I'm going for. I want to get some sear marks and grill marks. And then we're going to set it off to the side and we're going to, yes, accentuate is a good word, isn't it? And we're going to set it off the side and let it kind of bake the rest of the way. Um, but otherwise that's it. We're going to, we're going to, and I'm going to show you guys. If I can pull this off, now it's going to be a little weird because I can't find my tripod, my little mini tripod. I can find my big old tripod, and this is actually the cap for the tripod for the for the phone. But I'm going to use this and put my this little this little uh, uh, selfie stick. Yes, I know I'm, I'm I'm the guy with the selfie stick. I know it's kind of embarrassing, but 
Um, selfie stick makes it really easy to film things um, and get a little more distance instead of having a, you know, I gotta hold my hand out like this and have the phone in it and it's just fan yeah, so I can use a stick. And you can almost see it. You can almost see it right there. It makes it a little easier to get a little more distance away from you. So, um, by the way, if you haven't been on, seen my deck before, um, there's my little mini fridge and there's my TV and my bottle opener with a little basket under there right underneath it um, because uh, that's how I roll. You know, I don't have a fancy kitchen out here, but I do have a, a mini fridge uh, with beer. I have a TV, um, which I should have Monday Night Football on, but uh, I forgot to turn it on. And and we're switching cable providers, so there's no more box out here. So, ooh, we got a little flame action under here. Let's turn this around. Let's see how we look over here. Ooh, we got some nice browning right there. Nice flavor crust. All right, that's perfect. Now, so we had a little flame up on this end over here earlier and it looks like we're still getting some of that so part of the problem that but it's still it's, it's 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 brown more than it is black so which is good so America fridge yeah that's right that's, that's <laughs> uh, yeah yeah so um yeah I you know I see that you know F the fancy kitchens although I'm gonna tell you uh, as much cooking as I do out here for different brands I, I've got a, 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 a cook for a for a client on Saturday um, I really think I'm gonna. I need to get some. I'm, gonna, I'm actually thinking I'm gonna put. I'm gonna move these stairs over. And I'm gonna put a um, cabinets and a countertop just to have a surface area. I mean, what I have right here, I've got a two, a two four foot tables up against each other, you know, and they, it's just it's just not it's not the best. I don't have a storage out here for all the crap I need. Even though, by the way, American Muscle Grill, check this out. The drawers, watch. It's got those self-closing doors. My wife is so pissed. She's like, we don't have that in our kitchen yet. Look, look at that. Yeah, this, I'm telling you, man, this grill is just phenomenal. I mean, I, I literally, it's one of those pinch me things. Um, oh, somebody wants to know what's in the fridge. All right, we'll find out. So, um, I got some crafting. Um, I got some Bud Light for, I'm not really a Bud Light guy, but you know, a lot of people do, so that's for, for guests. I got just a little, some pumpkin beer in there, some Kolsch, um, Budweiser, there's a, uh, Omegang um, Blonde Ale. This is phenomenal, except it's like 11% by volume, so it's not one of those you want to have more than a, more than one of. So I just kind of have a, a variety of things, you know, in here. So um, I got some this is some sort of pale ale right here. I get, um, just stuff for for me for other people. Um, Try to take care of them. So then I have my well, it's the wire coming down for my TV. Got to hide that sometimes. Got to put a kitchen in. Bottle opener into the can. They're into the, the basket for all the bottle caps. So, all right. So let's check this this grill again. So, um, and, and the beer kind of changed. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm a big seasonal beer guy. So, ooh, oh, look at that. So we're looking good here. We're looking good here. So I'm gonna just drop this right over here. Um, all right. So, so you can see right here. You can see the you know the um, the coals that are right underneath the, the, the grill right here. Um, and we're going to need to go a little longer. It's going to need to bake this. Um, this might actually take longer than I thought because it's a little thicker than, than I normally do with this. So um, I'm going to get this right over here and um, right up to the edge of those coals. The coals end about right right here. All right. So we got that going and we're going to bake this bad boy for, for a while. So. Um, Big wine cooler guy. Uh, that's that wasn't my thing even when wine coolers were. Is, is that still a thing? Can you still go buy some Bartles and James? Or you know, is there any other? I don't even know. There's another kind. What, what else was there? I don't know. Um, was Zima a wine cooler? Or was that? I don't know. Did they bring that stuff back too? Baked. I'm baked. God bless you, man. Enjoy what you enjoy. You know what I mean. As long as you're not hurting anybody else. Um, so yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. Can anybody chime in on the wine cooler thing? Was that actually, a th is that still a thing? Is, can you still go buy and load up on wine coolers? Zima. I'll tell you a story. Um, I'll, I'll tell you a story about Zima. My sister's wedding. Um, um, God, I don't want to offend anybody here, but I might offend a little bit. Okay, so my sister's wedding back in the, you know, the, the, this is the early '90s, back when Zima was the hot thing, and and this guy's walking through the reception, and he's got a pink Zima, and I go. I go, hey, 
what is that? Did, did Zima come out with a second flavor? Because I thought the first flavor was terrible. And he goes, no, nah, man, you just throw a little shot of grenadine in there. It makes it great. And I said, you took maybe the gayest drink in the world and made it gayer. How did you do that? So there you go. Pink Zima for my sister's wedding. Um, are you eating that meat, man? Well, yeah, I'm going to eat it, but it's not done yet. It's got, it's still got to, it's still got to cook, get, get cooked on the inside. So we're going to show you, show you that process. Hopefully it doesn't take too long and I have something else to talk about. So what are my thoughts on propane barbecues? Um, somebody's asking right here. So I was the biggest charcoal snob on the planet. I thought you're going to cook on a gas grill. You might as well just wheel the stove outside and cook on, you know, cook that, use that on your deck. What the hell? Use charcoal. Ironically, at the time, I used uh, briquettes, the cheapest briquettes I could find, which was terrible, terrible fuel. So, while I was a snob about my fuel when it came to propane, charcoal or propane, I was using really crappy charcoal, so that was really kind of misguided. Um, then I had kits. Um, I, I, I learned a couple things. One, I learned about um, uh, 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 lump charcoal, baked rockwood charcoal here in St. Louis, and now I'm using some B&B right here. Um, but I also learned that sometimes I just want to cook and I don't have time to, you know, spend, you know, getting a charcoal grill growing and doing all that. And so, you know, I use a gas grill. Um, I, I'll tell you what I, what I tell people is this. Uh, my gas grill is for the week and my charcoal grill is for the weekend. Okay. So I will, this actually with the, with the gas igniter, um, lighting up the charcoal really fast. This is great. So I use, I'm actually using more charcoal now than I ever have. That being said, Every Sunday morning, I come out here and I put a couple griddles down on this on this American Muscle badass, and I make bacon and eggs right out here um, on this grill, and we we sit at that table there and we have what's called deck breakfast. When I was a kid, my um, my my favorite my, one of my biggest memories was was Sunday mornings when we when we had a big breakfast. It was great. Um, my dad cooked on Sundays. That's all he did. He cooked. He grilled in in the evening and he made breakfast. Um, and that was the only time we cooked. My mom cooked the rest of the six days a week. My dad cooked on Sundays. And so we're kind of doing this the same thing here. Um, obviously, my kids get a little more for me because I have to cook more for clients and things like that. But um, now we're doing, taking it to another level. So deck breakfast, our Sunday morning breakfast is now in, in the warmer months, or warm enough months, I should say, is now done outside. We cook it on this American Muscle. A couple of griddles in a frying pan. I can put a pound of bacon on the two griddles and... Um, some eggs in the frying pan and uh, happy happy as a freaking clam so um, I am not um, I am not at all opposed to using gas a gas grill it is great for what it does um, it gives me my fix um, my charcoal not charcoal fix I'm sorry my my grill fix when I don't have time to spark up a, a charcoal grill or I'm not gonna be you know obviously I'm not smoking a pork butt on a, on a, on a gas grill normally um, but, you know, I might, you know, for steak, seafood, you know, quick hitter stuff, um, grilling, grilled salad, look up, go to the website, grillandfools.com, check out grilled lettuce or grilled crostini, um, both great. Yes, I grill lettuce. Um, have you ever used this grill as a smoker? I, you know what, I have not used this, well, that's not true, I did, I use it, so I, I use it for a whole snapper, I, I cooked the whole snapper, it's actually on the website. And I, um, I smoked with some, some smoke wood, but I also smoked with uh, garlic and onion. I put whole cloves of garlic and whole, and whole slices of onion in the coals um, and cooked it that way so that, so that it actually, it'll be called the White Castle effect. It kind of like, oh, it's amazing. You can't really see the smoke very much, but you can smell it. You can smell it. The whole neighborhood smelled like, smelled like onions. It was great. Onions and garlic. And it really doesn't part into the into the into whatever meat it is. It's, it just has this amazing flavor. Try it with ribs sometime. Cook your ribs the way you normally do, the way you normally do. And take you know some onion, half an onion, slice it into thick slices, um, some garlic cloves, and just drop that into the coals. And when you stop smelling the onion, throw another slice and another couple cloves of garlic. It'll blow your mind. Just you can also search the website grillandfools.com for um, smoking with garlic and onion because it's amazing. Hmm. All right. So. Let me see how my how my steak is. Yeah, by the way, my grill, my well, here we go. Where's this at? Let's flip it around. My grill has headlights. I mean, you know, American Muscle Grill is based on a '69 Shelby uh, Cobra GT, so of course it's going to have headlights. All right, we're only about 90 degrees in the middle of this thing, 
95 degrees. So we got to come up about another 20 or 30 degrees. So I am going to actually um, get some extra right over the heat here, but we're going to actually just going to do this. We're going to do some flipping. All right. And my, I can't get pretty grill marks because it was frozen. So and then I got a, a flare up on this end. So I got some uh, some extra char, I should say. So we're going to uh, speed this up a little bit. And you know what we need to do? I almost forgot. This is this is a oh shit, I'm having a hard time with one hand. This is a New York strip. It has a fat that runs around the, uh, the, the outside of it. So we are going to crisp up that fat. Man, it's what? Oh, that fat's crisping up a little too fast. It's, it's starting to fire. Um, it is early to mid-October and we still got heat, humidity, and bugs in St. Louis. It's so strange. So we're going to keep moving this around so that the, the fire doesn't um, burn our steak anymore. It doesn't need any more char as it is. That steak looks like hell. Well, um, yeah, it's got some good char in it, man, but you know, char is good. And if you don't know that char is good, then turn in your man card, man. Okay. So, okay, so we got that side charred. And we're going to hit this side a little bit, too. Ooh, look at that. It's thick enough to stand on its own. I love the love about the American Muscle Grills. It gets these really wide grill marks. I love that. More grill marks is better. Um, is that the grill you cook the turkey legs on? I've never cooked turkey legs. So, um,. One of my thoughts on sous vide. So, I love sous vide. The problem is, is that I don't have any time for sous vide. I can never ever remember to do it. It's you know, it takes extra planning. And like I said, I'm cooking a frozen steak because I wanted to you know cook a steak, and I didn't have time to um, to I didn't have time to basically you know uh, basically thaw it out. So here we are. Um, so we've got this this thing. We're gonna we're gonna char a little bit around the outside and get this. I'm gonna try this end here. I'm gonna hit that, that end with a little, uh, little uh, extra direct heat, um, and then we should be pretty close to being done. I'm hoping. You guys are dying to see this thing. 